rice dumplings, or zongzi, are a beloved traditional Chinese delicacy, especially popular during the Dragon Boat Festival in May or June. They carry significant historical and cultural meanings. The leaves used for wrapping zongzi are a crucial part of the preparation process. These leaves not only encase the glutinous rice in fillings, but also impart a fragrant aroma, enhancing the overall taste of the zongzi. In recent years, a bright green type of fresh zongzi leaves has appeared on the market, attracting buyers with their appealing look. But these leaves turn out to be toxic. In June, a video blogger named Shin Junfei exposed on Douyin that some fresh zongzi leaves were soaked in chemical solutions as part of artificial processing. Today, I'm going to show you the high-tech tricks behind these zongzi leaves. Look at this leaf. It's been sitting outside for two weeks and still looks fresh, almost like it's some kind of elixir of immortality. Notice how the color of the stem is so uniformly green. Now, without the high-tech treatments, the stems would have varying shades of color, some dark, some light, but with this, they turn a bright green. The secret? Copper sulfate. This striking green color is like a magic elixir for the leaves. Add a bit more, stir it well, and see the color change. Like Hextech from the video game League of Legends, a blend of magic and technology. I've even picked up a couple of wilted leaves to see if they can turn green again. Look, even my dried leaves have turned green, looking fresh again. Now we'll cook it with some zongzi leaf essence for flavor, color, and aroma. How about that? Our high-tech agriculture isn't even from the same era, so how can you tell if these leaves have been treated? Prepare a pot of clean water and an iron nail. Put the nail in the pot with the leaves and boil them. You'll see a magical reaction. The copper will attach to the nail, turning it copper colored. If you want to test your own zongzi leaves at home, boil a paperclip with them. If the paperclip turns copper colored, then you've got some treated leaves for sure. Copper sulfate soaked green zongzi leaves can lead to poisoning. Copper sulfate has a strong irritant effect on the gastrointestinal tract and ingestion can cause nausea, vomiting, and gastrointestinal bleeding. Severe poisoning can result in liver and kidney damage, hemolysis, and even death. According to a video blogger, Dad's Review, Lao Bai, they released a video showing that five batches of wet zongzi leaves randomly purchased from online platforms all contain excessive copper levels. This indicates that these so-called fresh zongzi leaves were actually old dried leaves treated with copper sulfate to make them green again. Some people reported that their children experienced vomiting and diarrhea after eating zongzi wrapped in these leaves. A member of the National Food Industry Standards Technical Committee, Bai Li Chang, explained that some unethical vendors soak zongzi leaves in copper sulfate and other chemical agents to achieve a greener and more vibrant appearance. Consumers who buy these leaves for their looks and use them to make zongzi risk copper poisoning and harm to their health. A CCP state media, The People's Daily, previously warned about this issue. Ms. Zhang was on her way to pick up her child when she passed a supermarket with zongzi on sale. She praised the fresh appearance of the zongzi as she paid. After cooking them for dinner at home, her child started feeling dizzy and nauseous after eating. The child began convulsing and vomiting, and despite calling for an ambulance, it was too late by the time they reached the hospital, and the child died on the way. As summer arrives, it's also the season for eating crayfish, a popular late-night snack known for its spicy and flavorful taste. But crayfish also pose potential health risks. Recently, multiple local disease control departments have issued warnings that consuming more than 10 crayfish might lead to half disease, which has alarmed many crayfish enthusiasts and made headlines. How do people use artificial technology to treat crayfish? For those who love eating crayfish, let me explain the difference between manual scrubbing and technological cleaning. When you manually scrub crayfish, you can see that it removes 100% of the dirt and mud, ensuring that the dish's appearance and taste are not affected. Now let me show you how technology cleans crayfish. I'll pour in the shrimp cleaning powder, let it sit for 5 minutes. The water slowly turns white. This is the power of technology. Here's a crayfish I manually scrubbed. Deep cleaning, no dirt, no mud, super clean. With technological cleaning, the legs bristles and the abdomen's mud are all bleached. The advantage of technological cleaning is that it saves a lot of labor costs and time, but it's not safe for us consumers. 
First, the dirt and mud are not thoroughly cleaned. Second, the cleaning chemicals contain bleaching agents. They look clean, but are actually far from it. Technologically cleaning crayfish are unsafe to eat and can harm your health. You should never eat these crayfish. A friend of mine in Guangzhou runs a spicy crayfish business, making over 3 million RMB a year. To meet the demand of the 3 million tons per year spicy crayfish market, they move from rice field farming to high density greenhouse farming with medication. This way, they can supply crayfish year round. To make them look clean, some restaurants use shrimp cleaning powder, a strong chemical acid that can harm your kidneys and even cause cancer if consumed in excess. Additionally, the plant oil used for frying crayfish repeatedly is dirtier than gutter oil. You might think avoiding fried crayfish is safer, but even boiled crayfish are cooked with pounds of sugar, salt, chicken essence, and MSG, along with chili powder. To enhance flavor, they also use red oil and maltol. It's addictive and delicious. This way, even if you were boiling a shoe, it would still taste good. I don't know if you like eating crayfish like this, but I definitely don't. Recently, Taihe Hospital of Changsha admitted a man who experienced numbness in his lower limbs after consuming too many crayfish. The 37-year-old man, Mr. Zhang, is an avid fan of crayfish. In June, he ate a large quantity of crayfish during a gathering with friends. Two days later, Mr. Zhang sought medical attention at a nearby hospital due to pain in his upper limbs, numbness in his lower limbs, and general weakness. After examination, doctors diagnosed him with hypokalemia and elevated myocardial enzyme levels. His family then took him to the emergency department at Taihe Hospital, where doctors diagnosed him with rhabdomyolysis, commonly known as half disease. Several factors are suspected to cause half disease from crayfish consumption. First, crayfish often grow in poor environments. Many unregulated farms neglect to change the water, and some crayfish may come up from dirty natural habitats. Consequently, crayfish might contain toxins. Second, crayfish harbor parasites and bacteria, which may not be eliminated if the cooking time is insufficient. Third, the head of crayfish contains heavy metals that are difficult to clean thoroughly. Fourth, unethical vendors might add chemical agents like shrimp cleaning powder during the cleaning process. Research indicates that summer and autumn are peak seasons for half disease. Symptoms include muscular pain, weakness, changes in urine color, chest tightness, diarrhea, vomiting. In some cases, the symptoms are joint pain, fever, abdominal pain, nausea, headache, and even difficulty breathing. Severe cases can lead to acute kidney injury. This condition is not exclusive to crayfish consumption. It can also occur after eating other seafood, like marine and freshwater fish. It is well known that processed foods containing large amounts of additives and preservatives pose significant health risks. The impact of these food additives should not be underestimated. Recently, Chinese food exports to Japan and Singapore have faced scrutiny due to detected issues. On June 6, Chinese Shanjian thin skinned walnuts exported to Singapore failed quality inspections by local authorities, resulting in the shipment being returned. On June 11, chemical additives exceeding acceptable levels were found in Chinese food exports to Japan. The Japanese authorities reported that imported products, including instant noodles and frozen peaches from China, did not meet safety standards. Consequently, the involved companies were blacklisted by Japan and the shipments were sent back to China. In this recent food export issue, both Singaporean and Japanese food inspection agencies detected excessive levels of sodium cyclamate in Chinese products. Sodium cyclamate is a food additive that must be used with specific limits to avoid negative health impacts. Excessive consumption of sodium cyclamate can be harmful to health. In daily life, People often unknowingly consume large amounts of sodium cyclamate. It is commonly found in various carbonated drinks and listed among the ingredients in canned fruits, fruit juices, and foods like steam buns frequently consumed by Chinese people. It's not that white sugar is unaffordable, it is just that sodium cyclamate is simply more cost effective. A chain of steam bun shops in Henan secretly added sodium cyclamate to their buns. After long-term consumption, Many customers suffered nerve damage. In 2018, a man named Mr. Zhang 
founded a brand of old-fashioned steam buns, and rapidly expanded through franchising. By the time of the incident, the chain had over 40 stores. To achieve excessive profits, Mr. Zheng and six others used sodium cyclamate instead of sugar to improve the taste of their buns. Over 500,000 of such buns were confiscated, with sales totaling 300,000 RMB. Assuming one store serves 500 customers daily, all stores combined served around 200,000 people. This is truly abhorrent. Food safety incidents often only come to light after mass poisoning cases, and few victims receive compensation. Technology and harsh practices have become a topic of conversation for many Chinese people when dining. These two seemingly unrelated terms, when combined, have sparked widespread concerns about food safety. When considering everyday food, people often suspect whether these products have also been altered by so-called technology. You really don't know until you see it. I just discovered that red Fuji apples are brushed with color. I always thought they naturally grew red. What's even more curious to me is why they all have chopsticks stuck in the bottom. If things keep going like this, we won't need a war. Chinese people will destroy themselves. Do you believe it? Look at what we're eating now. Waxed oranges, bananas soaked in chemicals, food additives, preservatives, flavorings, and colorings are constantly harming our bodies. Children with deformities, young people with leukemia, infertility, could these foods be causing poisoning after long-term consumption? This is terrifying. Do you think there's anything left that's safe to eat? Watch this video. After seeing it, I was really horrified. To make chicken feet look bigger, they soak them in industrial hydrogen peroxide overnight. To make these garbage chicken feet look wider and more appealing, they soak them in caustic soda. They use all kinds of additives. If you like spicy, they add chili essence. If you prefer lemon flavor, they add citric acid. I really want to ask these unscrupulous vendors, would you and your family eat this stuff? Where is your conscience? Don't you feel any guilt? Under the CCP regime, some unscrupulous businesses cut costs to maximize profits, ignoring food safety and the health risks to consumers. Years ago, Chinese media exposed scandals involving Sudan red, malachite green, melamine, clambuterol, toxic rice, and gutter oil, raising public concerns about food safety. Perhaps the most repulsive among them is gutter oil, a term that evokes disgust. Gutter oil involves criminals selling used cooking oil extracted from sewers or collected from restaurants. Reports from China indicate that about 10% of the total cooking oil consumed annually, about 3 million tons, comes from gutter oil. Despite repeated crackdowns, the gutter oil issue persists, casting a long-lasting shadow over consumers. This isn't the first time or the second time. You keep putting gutter oil on the market. But do you even know what you're doing? Think about it. You also need to eat. Your kids might eat street food too, right? We have all the proper paperwork. This filthy stuff isn't suitable for anything, right? You've been here collecting it before. On June 12, in Xi'an, Henan province, a man repeatedly collected gutter oil across provinces causing a foul odor that disturbed local residents. After multiple unsuccessful attempts to persuade him to stop, the local community reported him to the police. Gutter oil poses serious health risks. Doctors state that gutter oil contains harmful substances such as microorganisms, lead, benzoaprine, and aflatoxins. Inhalation or ingestion of benzoaprine and aflatoxins can increase the risk of cancer. As China's food safety issues become increasingly severe, Chinese people are on edge. The list of contaminated food includes diseased pigs, toxic milk, poisonous vegetables, tainted eggs, toxic seafood, contaminated ginger, harmful seasonings, and dangerous beverages. Now toxic zonzo leaves have emerged, indicating the near collapse of the entire food industry. This situation also highlights the moral decline in mainland China with government oversight of industry and commerce virtually non-existent. U.S. Representative Dana Rohrabacher once stated that Chinese manufacturers use shortcuts and counterfeit methods to boost profits and dominate the international market with low prices. Meanwhile, China's regulatory measures are inadequate and corruption is rampant. A historian based in Australia, Li Yuanhua, stated that Chinese internet celebrity blogger Xin Fei and others have exposed the hidden practices of the food industry, 
by revealing the production process of black technology foods. In the absence of moral boundaries, the pursuit of low cost in the food industry leads to the misuse of additives or toxic substances, passing off substandard goods as quality products. Since people are concerned about their health, some additives are used to alter the appearance of food, making it more appealing or improving its taste, but they are harmful to the body. When added in certain amounts, these substances can be as dangerous as poison, and many people are unaware of these risks. Li Yuan Hua pointed out that the CCP prioritizes profit over public health in its regulatory approach. In this regulatory environment, harmful additives are mass produced and widely misused. The government's lack of oversight means there is no monitoring of what and how much additives are used in street food. This reflects the chaotic state of the food industry in mainland China. Thank you.